Hi students. In the last two sessions, we de were dealing with interference in thin films due to reflected and transmitted light. In both those cases, we considered plain parallel thin films. That is, the thickness of the film was a constant throughout. In today's session, we are going to deal with which shaped film that is films having variable thickness a thin film having zero thickness at one end and progressively increasing thickness at the other end is called a wedge as you can see in this figure how can a wedge shaped film be created we take two glass plates AB and AC at one end we keep the glass plates connected at the other end the glass plates are separated by a very small distance so that in between these two glass plates we get a very thin air film and the speciality of this air film is that it has varying thickness. The thickness of the film enclosed between the two glass plates is such that it is zero at the point of contact of the two glass plates and the thickness of the air film increases towards the edge of the wedge. And such an air film having varying thickness is called an air wedge. I think it is clear to you in this session we are going to deal with air films having variable thickness that is the thickness of the air film is not a constant how can such an air film be formed you take two glass plates such that they are joined at one end maybe by means of a rubber band or something and the other end they are getting they are kept separated by a small distance maybe you insert a wire between the two glass plates on the other side so that the two glass plates are separated by a very very small distance so between the two glass plates you get an air film and the speciality of the air film is that it has varying thickness the thickness of the air film is zero at this point of contact of the glass plates and the thickness goes on increasing towards the edge of the wedge okay such an air film is called an air wedge now using such a setup you can create indif interference patterns how does how can you do that now when a beam of monochromatic light is incident normally on the setup a part of the incident light gets reflected from the top of the air film from this part from the top of the air film and another part gets reflected from the bottom of the air film or from the top of the glass lower glass plate that is when a beam of light you know when we consider the case of an oblique incidence that is light incident at any angle it is something like this the light is incident like this a part of it gets reflected from the top of the air film another part gets transmitted out of the transmitted beam again a part gets reflected from the bottom of the air film these two rays superimpose and you get the interference pattern but in the setup for air wedge we are not interested much in the oblique incidence because it is not of much practical use Okay, so what we do is we consider only the normal incidence cases. That is, a ray of light is incident normally. Again, a part of it gets reflected from the top of the air film and another part gets reflected from the bottom of the air film. In this case also, these two reflected rays will superimpose and you get the interference pattern. Now, what is the shape of the interference pattern? The interference pattern obtained is in the form of alternate dark and bright bands like this continuous alternate dark and bright bands 
the bands will be straight parallel and equidistant the bands are straight and parallel because along a band the thickness of the air film is a constant you have got two glass plate like, like this and the air film is between these glass plates now you know along a particular band the thickness of the air film will remain a constant so that the interference pattern is in the form of straight parallel equidistant alternate dark and bright bands now the angle between the two glass plates this angle theta is called angle of the wedge and it is expressed in radians so this much about the introduction on air wedge what we have to do next is we have to find out the expression for calculating the angle of the wedge how do you find out the angle of the wedge theta to find out the angle of the wedge first we have to write down the conditions for destructive and constructive interference in this case that is what is the condition for i told you here the interference pattern is in the form of alternate dark and bright bands what is the um, equation condition for obtaining a dark band what is the condition for obtaining a bright band or a bright fringe so the condition for a dark ring is exactly the same as that we obtained for the condition for a dark ring in the case of interference in thin films due to reflected light because here again we are considering the superposition between light reflected from the top and bottom of the air film so condition for dark fringe is 2 mu t cos r equal to n lambda and the condition for bright ring is 2 mu t cos r equal to 2 n plus 1 into lambda by 2 exactly the same as in the case of interference in plane parallel thin films due to reflected light now look at this figure we are going to find out the expression for the angle of the wedge theta for that you consider two glass plates oa and ob so that let the point c and the point d correspond to two consecutive dark fringes say at c you have the nth fringe and at d you have the n plus 1th fringe that is two dark fringes now let the thickness of the air film at cb that is at nb t1 and let the thickness of the air film at db t2 this thickness is t2 now let the first fringe be at a distance xn from the uh, joined end of the air wedge and let the distance of the second fringe be at a distance of x n plus 1 from the end o with this much information we are going to start the derivation so if you get a dark fringe at c means a ray of light is incident normally a part of it gets reflected from the top and bottom and you get a dark fringe here another ray of light is incident at d and a part of it gets reflected from the top and bottom of the air film and you get a dark fringe at d now what i am going to do is i am going to write down the condition for both are dark fringes i am going to write the condition for the obtaining a dark fringe in both these cases so in the first case for the nth fringe i have 2 mu t cos r equal to n lambda it is 2 mu t1 because the thickness of the air film here is t1 now the ray is incident normally i told you for normal incidence you know angle of incidence equal to angle of refraction equal to 0 so r is 0 so cos r is equal to 1 or 2 mu t1 equal to n lambda now the film here is made of air so mu is equal to 1 so 2t1 equal to n lambda for at c 
now for the second consecutive dark band you will get in the same manner you will get it as 2t2 because the thickness of the air film there is t2 2t2 equal to n plus 1 into lambda it is the n plus 1th fringe subtract between these two you will get 2t2 minus t1 is equal to n plus 1 lambda minus n lambda or 2 times t2 into t1 t, i mean t2 minus t1 is equal to lambda or the difference between the thickness of the films t2 minus t1 equal to lambda by 2 okay now again come back to the figure now tan theta from this figure if you consider this triangle tan theta is equal to t1 by xn opposite side by adjacent side if you consider this big triangle then theta is equal to t2 by xn plus 1 and if you consider the small triangle here i just drew a dotted line so that this dotted line and OA are parallel. So if this angle is theta, this angle will also be theta corresponding angles. So if you consider the small triangle here, tan theta is equal to, this is the difference in thickness, T2 minus T1 and this is the difference in this distance that is Xn plus 1 minus Xn. So I get, from that figure I get tan theta is equal to, t2 minus t1 by xn plus 1 minus xn. I think it's clear from the figure. So that's what we have written here. Tan theta is equal to from the first triangle t1 by xn, second triangle t2 by xn plus 1 and from the third small triangle t2 minus t1 by xn plus 1 minus xn. For small angles we know tan theta is nearly equal to theta. So, theta is equal to, I am writing the third one, t2 minus t1 by xn plus 1 minus n, minus xn. That's the equation that we require. Or theta equal to, we know, we have already proved t2 minus t1 is equal to lambda by 2. That I am substituting here, lambda by 2 into xn plus 1 minus xn. Or, theta is equal to lambda by 2 beta. How did I get it as beta? You can see from the figure xn and xn plus 1 are the distances between two consecutive dark fringes or the distance between two consecutive dark or bright fringes the bandwidth. So I can substitute xn plus 1 minus xn as beta. So, I got, out, got the equation for the angle of the wedge as theta is equal to lambda by 2 beta. And the equation for theta, if I substitute these values, I get theta in terms of radians. Is this clear to all of you? This is how we determine the angle of the wedge. Now, the applications. Why do you make such a setup? In the Nana Namali Air Wedge in the Parina setup, it has several practical applications. By using this setup, you can determine the diameter of a given wire. How can you find out the diameter? First, you take two glass plates like this. Keep one end of them, you tie a rubber band, keep them in contact. In the other end, you insert the wire whose diameter is to be found. So that when you insert the wire, you get a wedge-shaped air film here. Now we know theta equal to lambda by 2 beta. You have already calculated it just now. Angle of the wedge is equal to lambda by 2 beta. And from this figure, you get theta is equal to opposite side by adjacent side. That is tan theta, tan theta nearly equal to theta. So it is opposite side by adjacent side or theta equal to capital D by L. So diameter of the wire D is equal to from this equation you get L lambda by 2 beta. So if you know the distance between the rubber band, if you know the distance from the rubber band to, uh, sorry where is it, yeah. from the rubber band to the end till the wire is kept then you can very easily calculate 
the diameter of the given wire if you are able to know the wavelength of light and the bandwidth okay so this is the first application second application is to test the optical flatness or planeness of a given glass plate so here we are creating the air wedge using two glass plates isn't it so uh, an air wedge is created by two glass plates now you can check if these glass plates are perfectly plane that is the surface of the glass plate is not have having any kind of disturbance that is the surface of the glass plate should not have any kind of uh, dis ups and downs on it it should be perfectly plane you can check whether your glass plate such glass plates which does not have any kind of disturbance on its surface is said to be optically plane so you can check whether a given glass plate is optically plane or not for that what you do is you take one optically plane glass plate a perfect glass plate that is your reference glass plate oa on top of it you keep the glass plate which is to be tested you have to test whether this glass plate is plane or not you keep it like this so that a wedge shaped air film is formed what do you do you keep one end joined by a rubber band the other end you insert something so that the glass plates get separated and you get a wedge shaped air film now you view the interference pattern using a traveling microscope the same microscope with which you did surface tension and all when you view through it through the traveling microscope you will be able to see alternate dark and bright bands if this glass plate is perfectly plane then you will get straight parallel equidistant alternate dark and bright bands on the other hand if it is not uh, optically plane then it you will get some kind of curved fringes or fringes which are not straight and parallel it is because if the glass plate has some kind of disturbance on its surface then the thickness of the film along a glass plate if this is your glass plate the thickness of the film along the glass plate will not be a constant if there are disturbance on the surface of the film so what you have to do is you take the second glass plate this one which is to be tested you polish it several times and replace it if you polish these disturbances on its surface if there are bumps and depressions on its surface it will be smoothened you replace it again observe through a traveling microscope Ex observe the interference pattern if it is straight parallel equidistant then this glass plate has become optically plane if it is not if the interference fringes are not straight parallel and equidistant break this glass plate again polish it and replace it and check whether it the fringes obtained are plane this process is continued till you obtain fringes of equal thickness thus the given glass plate can be made can be tested if it is optically plane or not and by polishing and observing the interference pattern you can produce or you can manufacture optically flat or plane glass plates so these are the two applications of air wedge i think the session is clear to all of you please go through the notes which has been uploaded in the google classroom and consult me if you have any doubts thank you